Well, the 2010 RoboBoats competition has come to an end. As you can see behind me, the tents are being taken down, the teams have gone home, but the last day of competition was amazing. In the morning, the last few teams finished their second qualifying runs. The afternoon, we had the finals, and in the evening, the results party. Let's recap, see how it went. The first team to put in for their second qualifying run was ODU Technology, who saw another disappointment. Weight issues caused the boat to veer off course just past the first gate. All right, so you guys were the first ones on the water this morning. How'd the run go? Uh, it went better than yesterday. Um, we made it through the first speed gate and attempted to go through the final one, but apparently we had some control issues. Georgia Tech Savannah managed to get the highest thrust of any team on their second qualifying run, but their right thruster fell apart as a result, making it difficult to get through the speed gates. So were you guys able to improve on your second run? Well, on a positive note, we managed to generate 51 pounds of thrust this time, which is apparently the most ever for this competition. But on a bad note, uh, not too long after that, the whole thruster fell apart. <laughs> so uh, we kind of had some problems with that, and it, it wasn't as strong as the other one. A compass malfunction for National Cheng Kung University gave them a hard time, but a few corrections got them through the speed gates. FAU skipped their first qualifying run Saturday, hoping to go for broke on Sunday. Unfortunately, getting to the speed gates was the best result their boat could muster. All right, so you had some time overnight to work on your boat. Any better today? Uh, well, it was technically autonomous because it went by itself, but beyond that, it didn't do much else. So it went forward, and that was good enough for us, I guess. After an amazing run Saturday, URI had a little more trouble on Sunday, suffering a computer malfunction just after collecting the ring. They'll definitely be settling for the score from their first run. All right, so on your last run, you got almost through the whole course. How'd you do this time? We didn't do so well. Uh, it seems we had a computer malfunction just as we collected the ring. So we're still unsure as to yet why it did that, but we're just gonna have to work on it a bit more and see what's going on, because we changed everything from yesterday, so we'll see. But uh, for the finals, you'll go with the score for the first run, is that right? Yes, we will. The reigning champions, UCF, had the best run of any team yet, nearly completing the entire course. They were the only team to even attempt depositing the ring in the purple hexagon, but just missed. This will be the run to beat. So were you guys able to improve things for your second run? Uh, very much so. We were able to complete almost the whole course, um, uh, fix the, the changes that needed to be fixed from yesterday, and uh, the last two missions that we were able to, uh, to, to almost do had never been tried before, so we didn't really know what was gonna happen. Very impressed with the performance, just need to make a couple of changes uh, for the finals, and I think we'll be in a very good place. After continuing disasters, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical was able to improve their thrust, but not their results on the course. So what did you guys change last night, and how did it go? Well, we removed some components. We ended up losing seven pounds of components that weren't working. Um, we got the compass working finally. The biggest problem we had today was the laptop that we finally modified to fit inside the case. Its battery was dead. The regulator it was on was too close to the nominal battery voltage, so that kept cutting out. But mechanically, we lost. We met our mil spec of uh, 42 pounds. We ended up weighing in at 40.5 pounds, and we increased our thrust to nine pounds. So we're happy, I guess. There's not much we could have done. The University of Michigan was the last team in the water before the finals. They improved on their results from yesterday, making it all the way to the channel and getting through two sets of buoys before the wind carried them off course. Well, you guys did real well yesterday, but it looked like you even upped it some more today. Yeah, we did a lot better today. Uh, one of the problems yesterday was uh, old software patch got back on the boat somehow and our GPS coordinate was a little off. Uh, today we fixed that, we made the circle around the blue buoy, we made it through two buoy pairs. Uh, I think the wind blew us a little off course and our field of range kind of lost track of the buoy course and uh, kind of was doing figure eight since then. But uh, we know what went wrong. We're expecting to do better next run and uh, hope to make it to the finals. After all the scores had been tallied, five teams qualified to compete in the finals. In order of their ranking going into the finals, they were in first place, University of Central Florida, followed by the University of Rhode Island, University of Michigan, Virginia Tech, and the U.S. Naval Academy. And now, highlights from the finals. On their second attempt, the U.S. Naval Academy made it through the speed gates and were able to grab the ring. That's as far as they got, but as the only first-year team in the finals, just competing next to veterans at this level is an amazing accomplishment. They got fifth place and a prize of $1,000. 
It took three attempts before Virginia Tech could get through the speed gates and grab the ring, but they were unable to find the blue buoy. So they took a risk and went for another attempt for a better result. Unfortunately, after three more attempts, they were unable to improve their third run before time ran out and they were forced to take a lower score. They finished in fourth place and received a prize of $1,000. The University of Rhode Island was unable to grab the ring until their ninth attempt, but then got caught on the buoy holding the ring. With 60 seconds left on the clock, they chose to risk it all on one last Hail Mary attempt, but missed the ring and ran out of time. They still managed to take third place and a prize of $1,000. On their first attempt, the reigning champions, University of Central Florida, made it through the speed gates picked up the ring and circled the blue buoy, but got off course as they navigated the channel and ended up tangled in the shore. They decided to let time run out and keep the run. Although it was a good run, it landed them in second place, ending their winning streak. They got a prize of $5,000. After some last minute code changes, the University of Michigan redeemed their last place results from the previous year with their best run ever. They made it through the speed gates, picked up the ring, circled the buoy, and navigated much of the channel before getting snagged on the second blue buoy. Eventually, the boat got itself loose, circled the buoy, and turned on its water cannon in search of the targets. It didn't hit the targets, but seemed content to show off with a little victory dance of its own. The University of Michigan walks away with the first place title and a prize of $8,000. Congratulations, University of Michigan. In addition to the prizes for the top five winners, there were other special prizes granted at the award ceremony, including the Thermal Management and Professional Communication Award granted to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University for $1,500. The Keel Up Award for Ingenuity and Quality of Component Design granted to the National Cheng Kung University for $1,000. The Sportsmanship and Cooperation Award granted to UCF and the US Naval Academy for $500 each. And the Plug and Play Award granted to Florida Atlantic University for $500. Well, that's it for the 2010 RoboBoat competition. We want to thank AUVSI and ONR for making this event possible, as well as the other sponsors that helped support it, the teams that participated, and the individuals that volunteered. Next year, there's another event. If you want information about that or this year's event, roboboats.org is the website. That's it for us. We'll see you next year. Oh, 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 oh,